Tonight I am going to press forward and I'm going to break my opponent down. I'm going to raise that gold in front of my home country. I have been feeling like the UFC world champion since the day I arrived here. Chad is in over his head. He will be shut down and he will be KO'd. The story of this fight is not just Conor McGregor, it's Ireland. This is a fight about how much pride these people have. The Irish people have come out tonight in a way that just defines them as a nation. Very few human beings in this world will ever experience anything remotely similar to what's going on inside the mind and the body of Conor McGregor right now. Out of Dublin, Ireland, the Other. Oh, he, he hurt him hard. He hurt him hard there. The oh, spin again. Who then shots, Connor? Skill! Skill! There's a good one, too, by Chad. Looking for the takedown. There's a big power shot. Got he gets him down. Beautiful shot by Chad. Connected. There's another hard shot to the body. And Tan takes him down. Two. McGregor says, let's keep her going. Round two. I can't put into words how grateful I am. Just to come in here and just to hear all the support yesterday and today. I'm shaking with the Irish people that support me. I swear to God, I've done this for us. Conor McGregor, ladies and gentlemen. joining us. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure, Mr. A. Davis. Thank you, Mr. McGregor. I'm going to take you back to UFC 189, first of all. Arguably one of the most significant nights of your fighting career. The biggest night of my fighting career, the biggest night of the company's career, the biggest night in the history of the game. There was a moment at the close of the fight with Chad Mendes where you went to your knees and there were tears in your eyes. There was a lot of emotion. It Tell me like... about what you were going through in that moment. What, what happened? Well, you would not understand the amount of adversity I had to conquer to make it to that octagon that night. The world tours I went on, the amount of media obligations, the amount of times I felt like I was a monkey in the zoo, locked in a cage, and they feed me a banana and tell me to dance. So 
I came, I overcame a lot of adversity and a lot of hard work to get to that octagon. And then you're talking what it was. You're talking of the arena, you're talking of the weigh-ins the day before, the amount of people that came out and traveled. Like I said, post-fight, that stands, that stands to me, Gareth. I'd never, ever forget that. I am grateful for every single person that's been supporting me on this journey. And, and then the gold belt, the, the big, the real check. Now it's the real check. The rest aren't real checks. This is the one where I can, I can do what I've been dreaming of doing, giving back to the people who have given so much to me. That is why the emotion came out of me. I know you lived with mum and dad for a long time. You're a very, very close-knit family. There's a lot of love in your family. You know, you're the apple of their eye, I mean, of your whole family. I understand that you gave back to them after your last fight as well. In my home, like many other homes in Ireland, the real stress and the real fights come from the mortgage, come from this stress of home. A lot of people are getting evicted from their homes around here. So that's something that I've grew up with. That was a big stress in my family. It caused a lot of stress, so I just wanted to give it back and help out and just do that. And just... My mother and father are still young. Now they, now they have their feet up, they can relax, they can... They are in a new place, so it's good. That's, that's something I always dreamed of. I always, I always visualize what giving would feel like given to people who have given to me, what that would feel like. I always dreamed of just showing up one day and be like, here. And that would always give me like good feelings. When people ask you about pressure and pressure you face in your life, in your career, you always say that you enjoy that pressure. What pressure? There was a lot of pressure on you, whatever you say, whether you don't feel it. You delivered because you delivered on a promise. You delivered against a secondary opponent. You've been was, the, was the bookie's favourite? Who was the bookie's favourite? He was. He, I was the favourite against Jose, but when Chad got uh, replaced, he was the favourite. The whole industry thought this was the one. He's not going to overcome this. I. I smiled at myself and I went in there and KO'd Chad inside two rounds. Maybe previous, when all the stuff is going on, all the obligations, the injuries, the hours that you're away from your comfort. But when you're in it and you're there, when you've made it to the octagon, I just, I feel free. That's why I'm saying I don't feel pressure on, on fight night. I don't feel pressure when I make that walk. Someone asked me what it's like when I make that walk, what, what it's like when you walk out into that arena, and I swear on my life, when I walk out to that arena, I honestly feel like I'm unshackling chains off of me. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I'm chained and I'm carrying a cross or something. And then when I get to that octagon, I'm, I'm peeling it all off. And when I finally step foot in that octagon and place my bare feet on that special UFC canvas, I feel free. Now what I am doing this for is finally here. I'm not doing this for this. I'm not doing this for fake acting and pretending I can, you know what I mean? trying to give emotion to some guy that wants emotion from me for a shot. I can't do that. I don't do this for that. But I understand that it's a double-edged sword and you must do that. I do it for the competition, to step foot inside that octagon, to have that feeling of freedom. So that is why I say I don't feel pressure in there. I do not. I feel free in there. You are given everything you've got. You're in there to die, you're prepared to die in there. I am prepared to die in there, and I'm also prepared to kill in there. People who haven't done it, people who maybe haven't seen fight sports in such a way and haven't been there very close, when you say, I'm prepared to, to kill, I'm prepared to die, it might sound strange to them, but do you have to have that attitude to be at the very top in your sport? I feel to be at the pinnacle of any game, in any, whatever you do, you've got to be a little bit gone to it. You're not all there. You've got to be almost insane to your craft. Mm. Not a lot of people can understand that. That's why I don't know about nothing else. I do not pay attention to nothing else. There was games of football on yesterday. There was rugby, there was this, there was that. And like normal society is like, let's talk about this and let's, let's engage in this. And I just don't, I can't do it. I just don't, I'm, I, people are talking to me and in my head I'm, I'm counting something. I'm counting up a number or I'm, or I'm knee deep in a sequence on the mat or in, on the feet. That's my life, sequences and numbers, nothing else. I cannot pay attention to nothing else. Is it a beautiful obsession, can I call it that? Is it a beautiful obsession? It's a beautiful life. 
Make no mistake about it, it's a beautiful life. I live good now. I live damn, damn good. I live like, like I, like I should, like I'm supposed to, like a young 27-year-old world champion should live. It's where the ring girls. That's right. That's a good point. You should walk around with a car and shake that. <laughs> Big similar. <laughs> This guy looks like a orange cotton candy. Uh, you look like a 50-year-old retired skateboarder. <laughs> a little fat old man you look like. You're not wearing your high heels today? High heel dress shoes? No, they're python skin. Python? I hunted them myself. You don't even know what python is in America. <laughs> you went into the tough house. I know the decision was made late. You went into the tough house as Tough 22 coach. Literally 48 hours, 70-odd hours after fighting Chad Mendes. Did you have any time to reflect on your fight? I or barely you just slept. Saying, yeah. I barely slept. You look ravaged when you walked in yeah. there for the first yeah, bits of filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had ups and downs in Las Vegas over there, you know what I mean? But in saying that, I was, I was going out sometimes, you know what I mean? I'm, you're trying to escape from, from it, but it was, it was intense to go back to back. But I watched them come in and I watched this energy and this, these young kids that have not experienced this yet. Ready, let's fight. Get top again, Saul. Get top. Get top. Atta boy. What's better than sitting in here and watching fights? Exactly. And this is what you can do for a living. Are you That's kidding me? Are you joking me right now? And I'm sitting there listening to him say that after like an hour before that thinking, I'm not even going to show up. I'm out of here. I've done what I had to do. I've raked in 60 million for them. I'll see you later. Don't call me unless there's a fight. And call me when the weigh-in day is there, and I'll show up one weight, and I'll, and I'll fight. That's what I was thinking. But when I got there, and when I was watching the fights, and I was listening to him say that, and I, I started to think, look where we are. Look where we are. We're sitting here, Las Vegas, comfortable, watching these kids fight for, to chase a dream, to change their life. So I picked up a new lease of life from that, and then I went into it with that. But even still, you're still having ups and downs. It's a long six weeks. It's a long six weeks. They were locked in the house, but I was also locked in the house. I went in there the first day and was eyeing everyone up, sizing everyone up. Yeah, as opponents. Just, I don't know yeah. why I do that. I just do that. I just, I size people up. I don't know why, but I do. I almost feel like when I step into this thing, I'm, I'm at war. I'm at war with everybody at all weights. But I, they were good people. They, they responded well. When you, when, you, when you keep it real with somebody, and you lay it out, said, I did lay it out. I said, this, I'm not gonna baby you, I'm not gonna hold your hand. I've been thinking of what way to approach it, so I wrote out some notes of what way I feel is best we'll do it. And just to let you know where, where I'm at with the whole situation. Everyone is here for their own benefit. Forget Team Europe and forget Team USA. There is no friends in this business. You are either here to win or you are simply a filler. We're all on our own journey, as am I. So this is it, you, hand, you come in here and handle your own business. You don't need nobody to hold your hand. I told them the truth and let the, let the chips fall where they may. That's, that's on them. But that atmosphere and that, that, that speech and that, that vibe that we created in the gym and that they're not truly, they're not truly friends here. They're, this is business. Be comfortable in the training environment, help each other out, stay injury free because they're all already banged up. Every one of them had a banged up elbow, a banged up knee, a busted up foot, a busted up face. They only fought just to get into the house. So you can't take people from that, stick them in a house, bring them to the gym twice a day and let them thump their head off each other. They won't make it to the fight. You know what I mean? They'll be competing with each other in the gym, they'll be drained. By the time they step in foot inside the octagon, they'll be flat. Their shots won't pull. They won't be able to pull the trigger like they usually would. So I pull the reins back off of doing that. Keep watching how they respond when it comes back around and it's team versus team. They respond like, like they should, like it's business. I love it. We got it done, and, and I, I enjoyed it, overall. Love it. Looking good, boys, yeah? yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take a picture of us all. That's <laughs> it. Great yeah. picture, yeah? <laughs> Smell that. Let's do it, brother. Smell that fresh, that fresh Dublin air. Can I take you now away from Las Vegas and back here in Ireland? Take me home. Take well, well, me home. We, 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 you are home, and you're you're fated here like a hero. You can't walk down the street now anywhere in Ireland without being known. How, how how is it dealing with that? How is it having to give your time because there are so many people who know who you are. 
I'll tell you what. For the, for the period of time, it was messing me up. I was like, didn't want to go nowhere. And I'm not that I didn't want to go nowhere, but I just was like, it was always, it's an event to go somewhere. I can't just go somewhere and do something. And now I don't give it. Now I'm, now I am going play. You know what I mean? Like when I was in LA and when I was in Vegas and we were planning on coming back and saying, right, this is going to be insane coming back. I need to, I need to figure out <clears throat> how I'm going to come back. And then I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be too heavy. I can't come in here and try and fight camp. And it's just going to be too, like, a, like, like I'm in a fishbowl or something. Then I came back and I was like, I love this place. This is my home. When I walk into the gym, there's a lot of kids, a lot of things I have to sign, and people ask me to sign and take pictures. But that's okay, that's, I help build that gym. I help build that, that place to what it is. That is my home. I feel comfortable in there, no matter what. Like, people will be sitting there videoing me, or I, I see that sometimes when I'm just sitting there and eating food, and I see a guy holding a camera like that, trying not to make eye contact with me, but he's videoing me eating food. And, I, and before, I'd be like, I can't, that freaks me out, but now I'm cool with it. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's okay. It's, Are it's they a all good positives? Problem. Is they all yeah, positives, it's, really? It's, yeah, it is all. I mean, not everyone's positive. Not everyone's, you know what I mean? Not everyone's happy to see a man succeed. As, 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 as wrong as that is, but not everyone is happy to see another man succeed. So that maybe was in my head a little bit too much. And I kind of let that play into me a little bit. But now I just, I put my feet up and I relax. I have a good team of people. I have a good setup. I feel free to go anywhere with no hesitation. Before I'd be like, all right, I want to go into town. I'd be like, I can't, you know what I mean? It's a bit too, uh, am I ready to be, some people just drag out you and just, you know what I mean? Then that's a little bit heavy, but it, uh, it's not too bad. People are understanding. Most, they're f fans, you know what I mean? That's a great thing to walk down the street and see a little kid and he's a fan and he's shaking. And the other day we were in Nando's eating food and there was a girl sitting right there and I just turned around, she's bawling, crying. Like literally in tears crying, like I was like I was something from uh, One Direction or something. <laughs> so it's good. It's a good. It's a good feeling. You know what I mean? So I I, I tell myself it's a good feeling, and it is a good feeling. Jose Aldo. Do you have any feeling that he may not turn up on the night? I don't think he'll be there. I just don't think he'll be there. He didn't show up the last time. We'll see. Have you just got a hunch, a, a, a feeling that he just doesn't want to face you? Yeah. Is it based on history? He's pulled out of five... History, eye contact, words, mind frame, even his gym, his training approach. I just don't, don't think with all those things combined that he can make it to the contest. But. If, he's, if he shows up, I feel I will KO him inside one. If he makes that walk and if he is in the octagon, I feel every single, every single movement I make will get an overreaction off of him because he's emotionally invested in it. There's too much in it for him. The whole country of Brazil, they all, it's all piling on him. So I, I feel if I just go, <laughs> he will react a million times too much. That's what I see the fight playing now. I feel him overreacting, overextending, and then being KO'd unconscious. You're not the champion yet. I am the champion. Well, you're actually the interim title holder at the moment. I'm a three-time world champion. At the moment, you're the interim featherweight champion. And at the moment, at the he moment, holds the belt. At the moment, I'm the Cage Warriors world featherweight champion. I'm the Cage Warriors world lightweight champion. I'm the UFC 145 pound featherweight world champion. But when you beat Jose, you become the unified champion. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's. He has one, I have one. My one's. My, you're only as good as your last one. His last one. 15 months ago. <laughs> Who's the champion? Who's the champion there? So, interim. Take that interim out of there. There ain't no interim in this. I'm, I'm a world champion. He's a world champion. We're gonna find out who's the unified world champion. Don't put interim in there, I don't like that. Reebok sent a load of gear over and I said interim. So what the f is that interim doing on my I showed up, he did not. Look into my eyes, little man. Little Brazilian. Ooh, vamos, hey. What happens if 
you do lose to Jose Aldo. That is not in the equation. That does not process in my brain one, for one second. Can you not allow yourself then as a fighter to go into that? I could try, yeah. but it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't even happen. Is, is I couldn't a... even try and feel that if I tried my best. It's not gonna happen. Is there like a safe that's in your brain that's locked and it just doesn't open know. that door? I don't I'm not a neurologist. I'm not a neurologist. I just cannot see it. I cannot feel it, so. It's fascinating that there isn't a chink of doubts, a chink of light that allows doubt into your mind over those yeah. things. Where does that come from, I don't Connor? Know, just from, just from what I see, what I feel, what I know. And presumably all the hard work you put in that we don't see behind the scenes as well. Yeah, of course, most certainly. I feel when it comes to it all, it's easy for people to look in from the outside. But when you, when you put it all together, not just the weigh-ins, not just the fight, all of the other stuff, nobody can do it better than me. Everyone else crumbles. Every single other person crumbles. But I show up. Two and a half years ago, you'd talked about, you know, picking up a dole check, you know, because you were in between fights. Did you have faith maybe back then that your time would come and that you would be able to explode onto the scene as you had? If I didn't, it wouldn't have happened. So I had to believe in it. I had to feel it. I had to have faith in it for it to happen. So you're damn right I did. So this journey you're on, it hasn't felt long and it doesn't feel anywhere near complete. I feel I'm only warming up. But on December the 12th, in the evening, when we're all leaving the arena, and we're coming to see you at the press conference, what are we going to be saying and what are you, you going to be saying? Be, you know what you're going to be seeing? Something, something nice. Something nice material. And where's it going to be? What do you mean, where's it going to be? Where's the material going to be? I mean, I'm draped around me. Fitted perfectly. Um, What's going to be around your waist? You're going to see the belt right there, right on the stage. You're going to see a banged up Brazilian. Hopefully we see that. Could be, could be somebody else. But you'll see me there with a gold belt, a brand new custom made suit, and a smile on my face. <laughs>